Okay, in this lesson we're in uh, chapter 1, section 2. We are going to be discussing points, rays, lines, line segments, planes, and how they're written and what their um, intersections could be of some of these items and what the difference is between collinear and coplanar. Right. All right, so we're going to be looking at first at what a point is. All right, so we're all familiar with a point represented typically by a dot like that. And in geometry, we give them names and their labels such as A. Okay, another point over here would be another point called B, and they're identified with capital letters. A ray has no measure, okay? It um, has a start point, or what we call an initial point, and then it will go in a direction. And then there's another point somewhere on the line. Of course, there's infinitely many points on this um, ray, however, we only need to identify it, and so I'm going to call this um, P and R, okay? So this ray, for its naming convention, it starts at P because that's its initial point, and R is the direction in which this ray is traveling. And then we do put a ray symbol over the PR. All right, we could also have um, ray RP, but RP... And it doesn't matter what direction it's going in. It's how it's named. R is the initial point, and P is just another point on the line in the direction that the ray travels. So this would be named ray RP. So your ray symbol symbolism will start with the initial point and any other point identified in the direction it goes, and then there's a ray symbol over it. Okay, so that's how you name rays. It has no measure, but it has a starting point and it extends in one direction. All right, a line. A line is one-dimensional. It has no measure also, okay? Um, because lines go in either direction indefinitely, so forever and ever. All right, really what a line is, it's composed of two rays going in opposite directions. So we'll call this ray A, and we'll call that B, so that's ray AB. And then it's composed of two rays in opposite directions, so ray, and we'll call this C, so ray AC. So ray AB, and ray AC make up the line BC. So line BC can be written like this, and we have the line symbol over the B and C. However, lines can be named many, many different ways based on which points are identified on the line. Um, and in this case, we have three points identified on the line, B, A, and C. So this could also be known as um, line CB. So there is no start and end point for a line, okay, because it goes on indefinitely in both directions, so we can name it any way we want. We could also name it, because A is a point on this line, we can name this line AC. It identifies the entire line, so there is no start, there is no end. We could also name this line CA, or we could name this line AB, and again, the line symbol over it, or we can name this line BA. So we have many, many ways to name this line in particular that contains three identifiable points. Okay. Now, another way you can identify a line is not only by the name of two points that are on that line, and that would be any two points in the line, but sometimes you'll have a line and you'll see a script letter next to it. So that would be line J. Okay, so when you don't have points identified on your line, you can identify your line by a lowercase script letter, and we would say that as line J, and it would be written off to the side of the line. So those are the two ways in which you can identify and name a line. Okay, and in this case, you don't have to put a um, line symbol over it. So if this were in um, text writing, it would just appear as the lowercase j, no line symbol over it. But when you have two points identifying your line, you must put the line symbol over it. Okay, a segment. Now, different from a line, a segment has a start point and an end point. So this would be A and B. So this is segment AB. They have measure. 
So you don't have arrows above your AB on your line segment. You literally have a line segment. It is not necessary to put points at each end. You just draw a line and you're good. Okay. You can measure a line segment where you cannot measure a line. So let's look at another line that has many points. Uh, sorry, line segment that has many points on it. Okay, so rock, R-O-C-K. Those are the points that are on that line segment. This line segment can be named as R-K or segment K-R. And when we say this out loud, it would be segment K-R or segment R-K. We could also name this um, line segment O-R or line segment R-O. We could also name this as line segment C-K or line segment KC, because it really doesn't have anything to do um, with the entire segment. It's the portions that you'd be interested. So segment RK or KR is from this to this and that whole measurable piece. Segment OR or RO would be only this piece from R to O or O to R. So it would not include the rest of that line segment, okay? The big one, RK. Segment KC or, or C, segment CK would only be this measurable piece of the line segment from C to K. So depending on what your problem um, is in, involves, you will identify what portion of a huge line segment or the entire line segment based on how it is written. That's where you would zero in on the name of the line segment to see what part are you looking at, okay? And of course, we also have segment OC or CO, segment CO, and it would only be this measurable part here, okay? Unlike a line where when you take say, a line BC, it means the entire line. When you say line AC, it means the entire line because the line is not measurable, but the segments are measurable. All right, then we get into space, okay? Collinear points. Collinear means on the same line, okay? So co means to exist with the line, so on the same line. So points that lie on the same line are considered collinear, all right? Those are collinear points. So in this case with this figure, A, B, and C are collinear. So A, B, and C are points. So we'd say A, comma, B, comma, C are collinear. There are many others in this problem. E, B, and D are collinear. They're also collinear. All right, and you put commas between your points because that's what you're talking about, collinear. Now, B and F are collinear. They lie on the same line also. So through any two points, um, you could draw a line. So therefore, those two points would be collinear on the same line. So we could technically draw a line from D to C, and we would have another line, okay? And it would be going, it would actually lie on this plane, okay? And, um, but it would be another line, all right? So there's many, many, many. When we're talking, when we're working with problems, it's only the lines and figures that you see on the original figure that we would be talking about, okay? But through any two points, you can definitely um, draw a line. So um, that is why those two points would be collinear. All right, E, B, and F are not collinear because E and B are on this line here, but F is only on the line with B, but not with E, okay? Now, that takes us into planes, okay? Planes are flat surfaces, okay? They have no thickness. They extend in all directions without end. So basically, if you look up at the ceiling or you look at your floor, um, you can see planes. The ceiling and the floor in your room, in your living room, in your family room, in your basement, they depict what we consider a plane in geometry, okay? Um, and planes um, are depicted by four-sided figures. Typically on paper, 
in, on a two-dimensional surface, we depict them as a parallelogram, okay, because it's a little easier to see, okay? You could also look at a tissue box. A tissue box has um, a top, a bottom, and sides. So each one of those are a plane. The top is a plane, the bottoms are a plane, and the sides are individual planes. Planes are... Um, named by a capital cursive letter, and that's usually in the corner of your plane somewhere, here, 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 okay, capital cursive letter. So this is known as plane Q, okay? However, they can also be named by three non-collinear points. So what that means is two of the points will be collinear, but there's a third point that is not. So another name for this plane, Q, where A, B, C, D, and E sit on. F is not on that plane, it's underneath it, okay? We could also name this plane A, B, but I can't say C because that would all be collinear, so I could say A, B, D is a plane, is another name for the plane. It's the same plane as Q. Another way we can name this plane is E, B, A. Another name we can name this particular plane is E, B, C. But we can't say E, B, D because they would all be collinear. So it's three non-collinear points. Two of the points would be collinear, the third one would not. Now, there is technically a plane that goes through B and F, but V and F, that line, BF, is going straight up and down. So technically, if you want, we could draw it out. There is another plane that goes through B and F. So I'm going to just draw connecting between B and F. And if I wanted a plane that contains that, it would go something like this. And it's a different plane that would intersect plane Q. So there are lots of planes all around us that are going through our bodies like invisible little um, um, sheets of paper, okay? Parallel, perpendicular, at every angle. Um, and that's what makes up three-dimensional space, all of these planes together. But this is how you identify a plane. And planes contain rays, points, and segments. Okay, and they can also contain lines because planes go on indefinitely, so so do the lines on those planes. All right, coplanar is our next discussion. Okay, and coplanar means that we can look at the points and lines that lie in the same plane, and if they have points and lines in the same plane, they are considered coplanar. So, the points A, B, C, D, and E are all coplanar, okay? So coplanar points, okay, are any three points that are non-collinear, all right? They are not collinear. They would make up a plane. So A, B, and D are definitely on there because they make up a plane. They are collinear points, but so is C, and so is E. These are all coplanar points. So we'll put uh, commas between them. All those points are coplanar. F is not on plane Q. F is below plane Q, as we saw before. Okay. So some lines that are coplanar are line AC, because we see it goes on indefinitely with the arrows, and line ED or DE. That's also. So these two lines are coplanar. Okay. And then we could also say the segments are coplanar. So if we cut off at A to C because we can measure point to point and we cut off um, from E to D and we measure point to point, that would be um, the segment AC and segment ED are also coplanar. Ditto for rays. We can pick anything here for a ray. We have rays BC from B to C. We have rays BA. Okay, they're um, on the line AC, but 
They are rays on the plane. We also have LOM ray B E. We also have uh, ray B D. And again, we could also name some rays E D, ray E D, starting from here going that way. All right, not this little piece here, but from the point E, D, e going to toward D. We could also say we have. Uh, ray CA. I mean, so there's many rays on this uh, plane. These are all coplanar rays. All right. Okay, so now we've talked about this briefly already, and it's something you've grown up knowing. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. If I have two points just randomly on this page, I'll call them S and T. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. There you go. All right, second axiom of postulate that you need to know, they're accepted as fact, okay? If two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. Not two, not three, but one. So here is a line J, okay? So we have line J, and we have line K, okay? Again, these are not identified lines by points, but by the lower case cursive, okay? They intersect at a point right here. And we can call that point anything we want, so I'll call it P. So that's where they intersect. So two lines intersect at exactly one point. All right, then we get to planes, okay? When we're dealing with planes, two, line, two planes come together and intersect in exactly one line. So this is the part of geometry, you know, it's really cool is you can cheat. Look at the ceiling and look at the wall. The ceiling is a plane. One of the walls is a plane that you're looking at. When the plane, when this, the ceiling and the side wall intersect, you can see the seam where they intersect, and that is a line, okay? So if two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. So in this case here, okay, we have plane P and we have plane Q in red, and when these two planes intersect each other, they're intersecting right here in line AB. Now remember, planes go on indefinitely, but for on paper and two-dimensional surface, they look two-dimensional because we contain them with a uh, quadrilateral, usually a parallelogram. And then through any three non-collinear points, three points that are not in a line, there is exactly one plane. So let's take three points throw them around here, I don't know, throw one over there. So we'll name this C, D, and E. Now, I can draw a line through C, D, I can draw a line through D, E, I can draw a line through C, E. But because these three points together are not collinear, they lie on one plane. That's where they lie. They're not above each other and they're not below each other. They are evenly uh, distributed on that one plane. And we can draw a plane right through it to contain them so that we can actually see it. All right, and that's the terminology that you need for three-dimensional, two-dimensional space for points, rays, lines, line segments, and uh, planes. So that should help you with the rest of your work. And if you have questions, we will address them in class.